God bless you, dear family, and may the Lord's light shine upon you and guide you in all of his ways. Amen. I was dreaming that I'm in the desert community house. It had been a very long day of back-to-back confessions and spiritual counseling. I was completely spent and drained of all energy. I decided to pull a Mother Claire and lie down for 20 to 30 minutes. I went to our room, laid down on the bed, and closed my eyes. At this point, John and I were married, and we had about 14, 15 people with us. I fell into a deep sleep and heard what felt like just a few minutes later, someone saying in my right ear, Get up and go down to the basement storage. I woke up and headed downstairs to our storage area, and there I saw one man and three women sitting in a circle around a lit black candle, speaking in languages I didn't understand. These four people had come to us just two days earlier. I didn't want to let them stay initially, but after leadership discernment and seeking the Lord, we knew God would protect us and all would be well. They immediately stopped speaking in demonic tongues when they noticed me. I was thinking, where is John? Could really use his cover about now. I thought about Wowsy with or without someone else, and decided the Lord was all I needed. For some reason, I closed my eyes, started praying in the Spirit, and my right hand shot out with open palm facing the candle. It was instantly snuffed out. I could feel the full power of the Holy Spirit working in me as I was able to pray in tongues and quote Scripture out loud simultaneously. I instinctively knew we were dealing with three witches and a head warlock. The more God's word went forth in the small room, the more they would writhe in pain until they fell to the floor looking exhausted and worn out. The warlock was trying to speak in his demonic language, but the Lord wasn't allowing him to say a word. He was rendered mute. Smoke was coming off of him and the word of God held him in place so he couldn't move or speak. All he could do was listen. I could sense that Jesus was healing and moving on their hearts towards his love when I awoke from the dream. Now, what I discovered in this dream and a subsequent dream was that our swords have the ability to meld into our forearms allowing our right arms to root the enemy and our left arms to reveal truth and send forth blessings, convicting our oppressors. The more you use the swords, the more they become part of your armor. Words cannot describe how it feels to wield your hands and arms as heavenly weapons. It's it's amazingly incredible. Jesus began speaking. Idolatry runs high when sorcery, witchcraft, and drugs are used to call forth and commune with demonic entities. Today's culture is fascinated and entertained by the occult and witchcraft. Society promotes the use of recreational drugs, creating the worship of one's own pleasures above me. This is idolatry. I should be the true object of your desire, seeking me and me alone. Elizabeth, the ever-increasing manifestations of self-worship and those involved in satanic practices will be all around you. This area is a hotbed of witchcraft and spiritual activity. The solution is to remain close to me and offer them unconditional love, which will draw them to my heart. Your prayers will not go unanswered. These souls are accustomed to hearing about their sins, being treated as outcasts and shunned from society. Use love and come in peace when trying to reach people in difficult or uncomfortable situations. There has been a lot of damage done to biblical witness in this area, 
as some have come preaching hate, that I hate them because they practice witchcraft. On the contrary, I love them and hate the sin. You will meet them, interact, guide them to me, and above all, show love and pray for them. I said, whoa, whoa, Lord, please back up. What was that last part about interacting? Jesus smiled and continued, Your interactions will be in the physical as well as the spiritual. I thought, oh joy, something to look forward to. Do not sacrifice your beliefs and values in the process. Respond by listening, praying, and loving, especially when natural tensions arise. The mark you leave with them will be the planting of my seeds in their hearts, and others will harvest those seeds. You will feel the underground elements of this area. It will come in the form of spiritual heaviness. Do not give way to this dark feeling. Pray it through. Stay wise. Be on guard and rooted in my truth. Your power lies in your testimony of my love and in my blood. The Holy Spirit is up to the task. Armor up. Continue to practice spiritual warfare and use your heavenly weapons every day. I give you the power to triumph amid spiritual battles and engagements. And that was the end of his message. In Ephesians 6, 10-18, we read, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. Put on the full armor of God, so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Amen.